I'm Gabe Jewell, and this is Comic Smack, your weekly daily all the time, anytime comic show where I give you your fix, everything you need to know from the world of comic books and superheroes. And on today's show. As the man Gog ravages Asgardia, Jane Foster is forced to come to terms with her own demise. What'll happen next? Well, let's hop on in together and find out. Alrighty then, so picking up with Jane Foster on her deathbed, being this close to her own mortality is making her think back to all the other times in her life she was faced with death. First up is her mother, who ironically enough also died of breast cancer much like how she is now. Her last words to her were essentially find something to believe in, find God. Of course if you're a comic reader you know full well it was the gods that found Jane. Next up we have the death of Jane's father which wouldn't you know it was actually overseen by Dr. Donald Blake. At first she believed him to be in a better place free from all of this earthly pain but at the same time it brought her no comfort. Now while Jane is dealing with all of this it's juxtaposed with Thor and Odin duking it out with the man Gog, and it is not going very well. They are throwing absolutely everything they have at this monster, and he keeps shrugging it off like it's absolutely nothing. He is like secret final boss in an RPG hard. Now, while all this is going on, Loki actually appears to Freya once again. She's mad at him, what with the whole stabbing her with a poison dagger thing, but Loki says that if he wanted to kill her, he would have. Loki's been playing both sides in the War of Realms, but it's clear that he loves his adopted mother very much and even offers to take her away from the assured destruction of Asgardia. But she rebuffs him and it's a really heartbreaking moment. She basically says that if Asgardia is going to die, she's going to go down with the ship. And hey, speaking of moments of heartbreaking mothers and their children, this scene is juxtaposed to yet another moment where Jane Foster faced death. In this case, it was the death of her ex-husband and child. Oh wow, Keith and Jimmy Kincaid, what a continuity deep cut. That's like some early 60s stuff that Straczynski went back to in 2007. Good pull, Aaron. Once again, Jane returns to the idea of gods and heroes and how when it was her family on the chopping block, no one came to help. Now, back in Asgardia, believe it or not, things are getting 100% worse. Mangog has knocked around Thor and the Allfather, and now he's reached the control center for Asgardia, making the whole island careen out of control. Meaning he can pretty much crash it into anywhere, and if I had to guess, I would say Earth. This doesn't go unnoticed by the heroes of Earth either. Either. Ross Solomon places a call to Alpha Flight, and it's made very clear that we are entering an end of day style situation right here. Not the Schwarzenegger movie, I'm talking like the actual end of days, end of days. With no help coming quick enough, Jane decides to take one last look at her results just to see how truly doomed she is. She decides that she's not going to go out like her mother, her father, or her ex-husband. No, she's not going to wait for a god to save the day, not when she can go on one last ride. And with that, she summons Mjolnir, transforms and is ready to roll on out as the comic ends. So that was the Mighty Thor issue number four, everybody, and it was a very emotionally effective, often very sad gut punch of an issue. Jason Aaron has added so much depth and complexity to Jane Foster as a character in his almost six-year run on the Thor title, and it's clear he's not done even right here at the end. This is a story that very stylishly juxtaposes a down-to-earth story about coming to terms with one owns mortality and pairing it with an equally uphill battle about space vikings fighting a giant monster, and yet they work so well together. It also takes us one step closer to which will surely be one of the biggest finales in recent Marvel history. Overall, I'd give this one another much deserved 9 out of 10, so that's the Mighty Thor, everyone. I hope you enjoyed it, and as always, be sure to take a closer look at some of these other videos I've been working on. Then you can follow me on Twitter and Facebook, at Cape Joel, so you always know what I'm doing next, and hey, if you're feeling in a supportive mood, please check out my Patreon page as well. Patrons get exclusive access to videos and content before anyone else, and you can do so for as little as a dollar a month. And until next time, everyone, this has been Gabe Joel. Thank you so much for watching and listening, and I'll see you all again later. Bye-bye.